Welcome. I am Jackie Wilson, Director of the Delaware Academy for School Leadership at the University of Delaware. Dazzle is honored to partner with the Delaware Department of Education to discuss elementary science education. This video is intended to support elementary principals in advancing science in their schools. We are excited to engage you in some new thinking regarding elementary science. Hello, thanks in advance for watching our Why Elementary Science video. I'm Tanya Mead, Science Education Associate for the Department of Education in Delaware. This video is intended to support elementary principals in advancing science in their buildings. District goals and improvement plans include career and college readiness. Students who do not receive adequate time in science at the elementary level are unlikely to achieve this goal. In this video, we will look at patterns that emerge in elementary science around the state and nationally, provide learning tools and resources to help you plan on advancing science in your elementary building. This video will help you determine actions to accomplish this, identify the needs in your setting, and consider how you will lead the learning of other adults related to elementary science. As educators, one of our major goals is to support comprehension development. Were you aware that content knowledge in subjects such as science support comprehension development? Today, we introduce you to resources available to Delaware school leaders to support excellent elementary science education. The resources provided by the Delaware Department of Education on this webpage will help you determine actions to advance science education and instruction in your school and to assist you in leading adult learners to support this goal in your school. I am excited about the possibilities. Let's get busy leading science education in Delaware schools. To accomplish this, identify the needs in your setting and consider how you will lead the learning of other adults related to elementary science. With our time, we will share the case of why elementary science. Using research and data provides you a self-assessment to be completed throughout the duration of the video, provides you with a series of five learning tools which you will work through in order with your leadership team. These resources will help support your learning together as a community to help you identify needs in your system related to science. And finally, using what you learn and your needs assessment will move from reflection to action planning. These learning tools will provide models as you think about where you are with science in your building and where you would like to be. They will help you engage with expert image of the target practice, reflection and metacognition through the discussion questions and self-assessment will take you into action planning. All of these learning tools and resources can be found in the resource guide under the www.k12.de.us site. It has links for each learning tools in addition, all the guidance for facilitation. Before we get started, we would like to ask for you to complete a pre-survey to help us gather information on the usefulness of the video format and the learning tools that are included. We ask that you and each member of your team complete the survey. It only features a few questions and shouldn't take more than two minutes to complete. This survey can be found on the tiny URL on the screen and linked below this video on the webpage. It's really important to teach elementary science because science really has two main purposes for kids. One, the purpose of teaching science helps to really explain the natural world to children. And number two, and even more importantly, it builds upon their natural curiosity that they have. So teaching elementary science exposes the kids to lots of phenomenon and how that phenomenon is relevant to themselves. And that's what elementary age kids are really looking for, to be not only to understand themselves, but to be able to understand that world around them. Well, elementary students are curious by nature. They're like little sponges that soak up information during their elementary years. If you're a parent, you know that young children ask why about a million times a day. 
They're eager to figure things out and figure out how they work and why. If you watch young children on the playground, you're gonna find them exploring on their own. They're curious about the world around them. That's what makes this an ideal time to begin teaching them about science. Just as they're learning the basics in reading and math, they need a foundation in science to build upon their later education. It's critical that our children have a strong foundation in science, as they are the ones who will be finding solutions to many of our world's current issues. It's essential that our children learn to be innovators and problem solvers. Science class is fun because it answers my, que my questions that I have, and we get to test things out. I like science because um, like it helps me like I'm I like um, I'm always curious about things, so I like how how they make stuff or um, how will I do it if I can improve it. This year we studied uh, bridges and engineering in second grade for a homework assignment. My students had to go out into the community, find a bridge take a picture of themselves on it or take a picture of the bridge and then bring it back into class and build a model of it. So whenever you can relate it to our community in the real world, again, that will be very engaging. So homework is another way to fit science concepts in. One thing we've done in science this year is we come, we tried to see if an arch bridge is like has more strength and more like weight or if a beam bridge has um, more strength and more weight. And we would build an arch bridge or a um, beam bridge with, with certain only certain materials that we had in boxes. And and we would try to make an arch bridge and if and if we would all test it up here on the table, like that one over there, but and then we, we would test it and then we would, and we would put weights in a cup and put the cup on top of the bridge mm -hmm. to see how many weights we could put. For the first of our five learning tools, we will be using an article from stemteachingtools.org. The article, entitled, Why Do We Need to Teach Science in Elementary School?, provides you with research about the current issue, things to consider, attending to equity, and recommended actions that you can take. While you are viewing the article, feel free to explore additional studies that interest you by clicking on the hyperlinks. At this time, please pause the video and answer the following reflection questions utilizing learning tool number one. After responding, complete sections T1 to T3 on the self-assessment. This is the first part of the teaching and learning section. Resume the video when you have completed your conversations. When I visit elementary teacher science classrooms, I see amazing things going on, and I think we've always seen amazing things going on in elementary science, but it's different when you visit an NGSS science classroom. I think it's not just the content shifts that you've seen, but I think what you see more is excitement, depth, and rigor. And I think where that really comes to play is the pedagogical techniques that teachers use. I think the other things that you see going on in really good practices in NGS classrooms is you see students generating questions. And with those student generating questions is you see student discourse. So kids doing more than just turn and talks, kids are exploring, they're challenging each other with conjectures, they're having to defend their hypotheses, and you have this very collaborative sense of what makes the answer to that phenomenon. An NGSS science classroom is a collaborative classroom. It is noisy because students are talking with each other. They're discussing, they're exploring, they're planning and revising and reinvestigating. It's also messy in the sense that it is student driven. The teacher is no longer the lecturer telling students step by step how to proceed. Instead, the students are planning and discovering the steps on their own. They are actively investigating, revising, and retrying their investigations as they learn new information and assimilate that information into their learning. One group of students may be traveling a very different path than another, although both are leading toward the same end goal. So what appears messy is actually quite structured. My students always look forward to science, and I think that is partially because they can sense how passionate I am about it. Students naturally are scientific learners. It provides opportunity for questioning, predicting, 
testing, and most importantly, hands-on learning. It allows students to lead the lessons because they observe phenomenon in our natural world, question it, and they decide the path for learning. It is very rewarding to see an elementary student wonder about things in our world and then design and carry out experiments to learn. The students are very open and receiving of teaching in this manner and thrive when given a part in their learning. For our next learning tool, we will be looking at a document from Achieve. This document was created to inform principles of next generation science standards. It also provides information on the key instructional and conceptual shifts necessary for next-gen science standards. Before beginning, take a moment and reflect on the following question. What are the next-gen science standards? You can pause the video now to take reflection time to answer this. At this time, access learning tool number two using the following link. Review the document and discuss this as a team. Once finished, complete sections L1 to L3 on your self-assessment. Feel free to pause the video now. In order to cultivate a school environment that sees science as important and relevant, school leadership must embrace the new standards, work closely with the school leadership team so that they can get buy-in from their colleagues, and provide sustained professional development in order to shift instructional practice. Even though all three are important, the last point is the most critical. Teachers need sustained and continuous professional development in order to shift their instructional practices. This consists of teachers modeling newly learned practices for their colleagues and getting feedback, having professionals model instructional practices using their teachers, students, and having professional conversations around the impact of those newly learned instructional strategies. For our third learning tool, we will be using an article from the University of Washington Institute for Science and Math Education entitled, What School Building Administrators Should Know About the New Vision for K-12 Science Education. In this article, you will find a variety of STEM learning and teaching tools that help merge research with classroom practice. If you are interested in learning more about NGSS and issues related to implementation, you can find more at stemteachingtools.org. This tool specifically focuses on what school building administrators should know about the new vision for K-12 science education from the viewpoint of the next-gen science standards. Go to the following link to individually read the article. Afterwards, answer the reflection questions that appear on page 2. Finally, pause the video and complete sections C1 and C2 on the self-assessment. I think the first step is really understanding that science is valuable. It underpins everything in our society, every decision that we make. And if we don't start understanding that from an early age and bringing it up through our curriculum, we cannot expect people to graduate college and career ready when it pertains to the sciences. Uh, I think the next piece to that is not looking at the sciences as disciplines in isolation, but bridging from, say, the biologic sciences over to the social sciences. So getting people, especially youth, to understand that while we might be making a decision around, say, a wetland for uh, biological reasons or environmental health reasons, it also has economic implications. It has development implications, um, land use, and a number of other things that go beyond even just that site. I think sometimes what's happening is we're looking at them too much in isolation and not as parts of interconnected and interdependent systems. And that's a real, a real danger if we don't figure out how to address that as well. Learning tool number four is a resource brought to you from the National Research Council. This table is an excerpt taken from an article entitled Guide to Implementing the Next-Gen Science Standards. This comprehensive table is a one-page reference sheet that focuses on what you should see more of and less of in a next-generation science classroom. To frame the use of this tool, imagine you are walking into a science classroom in your school. What would you see? What would students be doing? What would teachers be doing? Using sticky notes, record your ideas on these questions. One idea per sticky note. Take a moment now to pause the video and record your ideas. At this time, read over learning tool number four linked below and consider where you would place your sticky notes within the two columns. What would it take to move toward the items in the right-hand column? 
After this activity, reflect on this guiding question as a group. What implications are there for next steps and action planning? Finally, complete sections T4 to T6 on the self-assessment. A summary of your action items is located above. Please pause the video now and complete these. Why is this critical? District goals and improvement plans include ensuring students graduate career and college ready. All students have the right to become high school graduates who are prepared with knowledge and skills to succeed in the workforce or higher education. Students who do not receive adequate time in science at the elementary level are unlikely to achieve this goal. Elementary students have a variety of interests and science education aligned to the next generation science standards allows them to gain skills such as how to analyze data and solve problems. Whether in the area of life science, chemistry, or biology, the number one interest today is healthcare, and we know that students must have exposure to chemistry and biology to succeed in healthcare studies. Students' interest in these sciences starts in their elementary school exploration. The final learning tool is a resource from the Instructional Leadership for Science Practices. It is a supervision tool that can help show how instruction progresses over time and focuses on the science practices. If you're interested in additional tools to support supervision in science, you can visit the Instructional Leadership for Science Practices website. At this time, please download and review the Science Practices Continuum found at the following link. At this time, we would like to give you and your team some experience in observing some science practices in real classrooms. We are going to have you watch a video from the teaching channel and achieve. You will be watching a portion of the video queued up from 2.29 to 5.30. You will utilize the science practices continuum as you watch. As you watch and utilize the document, think about these guiding questions. What science practices can you observe? What level would you rate your observations using the science practices continuum? Please enter the link below and queue it up to 229. When you are ready, watch the video to 530 with your team, noting the science practices in which students are engaged. Afterwards, complete sections S1 and S2 on the self-assessment. Go ahead and complete the action items listed above now. One extra tool that we would like to add on to this training will help your leadership team gauge your school's readiness to move forward with next-gen science standards. The principal leadership paradigm will help frame and guide your work as you begin to create an incredible elementary science program for your students. In order to cultivate this work, we must have fertile ground to grow on. This is why school culture, systems, and learning all working together is so important. Culture sets the foundation, systems support the culture, and learning shows the belief. Follow the link to an additional planning document that will help organize your reflections individually and as a group. As you work on this, keep in mind the following questions. What problems of practice have you identified? What theories of action have you developed to drive your improvement efforts? What next steps need to take place to move you forward? Hit pause now and complete the following culture assessment questions. These questions are designed for you to assess your school's culture and readiness for the next gen science standards. As you approach the next row of the learning tool, Systems, pause the video and answer the following guiding questions to help you assess the way that systems either support or hamper the ability to advance elementary science education in your building. As you approach the final row of the School Improvement Planning Tool, Learning, pause the video and answer the following guiding questions to help you assess the way that your current way of learning for students and adults either supports or hampers the ability to advance elementary science education in your building. As we all know, change does not happen overnight, but always starts out with a vision. 
To this extent, we have provided you with a five-year vision planning tool that addresses the three areas just discussed, culture, systems, and learning. Use this document to help organize your vision for elementary science in your building or district. Where will your school be in five years? So in five years, I hope that I will be a stronger NGSS science teacher. I want to continue to grow my uh, toolkit and confidence around releasing control to students and facilitating their learning. I believe that my instruction will be more closely aligned to NGSS standards for my grade, and I will do anything I can to further that. Um, at the same time, I want to make sure that I can stretch the tentacles of science into all uh, as many other areas in my classroom as possible so you can blend together your learning with math concepts or uh, literature and informational text that relates to the top and that's a really powerful way to con to uh, keep science uh, at the forefront and it's also a powerful way to engage kids in those other subject areas as well. In five years I hope that science in elementary school is looked at as an important aspect to our future. I hope that more time is given to the subject so that teachers can teach NextGen to its full potential. Regardless of time, I know that my science teaching will never retreat back to reading from a manual. Seeing the students' excitement when we investigate a new phenomenon or their determination to come up with deep questions brings joy to my teaching. Seeing the students build their initial background knowledge and defend their thinking makes me so proud. And NextGen brings out the most in them. This is how science should be, a student-led classroom community filled with productive struggle and lifelong learning and curiosity. Why elementary science? Why you? Why your team? Why now? What happens if your team doesn't act now? Our kids deserve our best thinking and opportunities to be ignited by science. You can't do science without reading, writing, and math. Science is the perfect partner, so how about teaching, reading, writing, and math by applying those skills in the subject of science? Thank you for your engagement in this conversation with us today. We would like to thank others who contribute to the development of the video on behalf of our students in Delaware. Lastly, we ask that you complete the post survey so we can collect data to know how well these resources are working. You can find it on the tiny URL on the screen and linked below this video on the web page. Thank you. Thanks. If you are interested in producing videos like this, visit vrwheatley.com today.